Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat and you're going to hear it kind of echoey today because I'm in my kitchen. We're gonna dye some papers. I've had a whole bunch of questions on um, how I do my tea dyeing, so I thought I would go ahead and do a video on that. I have done videos kind of like this before, but um, we're just gonna do it again because I could use a few more papers and um, that's the easiest way for me to show you guys. So I have right here some instant tea. Oh, I forgot the bottle. Hold on just a second. I just use this Lipton um, iced tea, unsweetened. Obviously you don't want the sticky. Um, and that's, that's it. So I use the instant iced tea and I fill this little bottle about to right there which is about three tablespoons of the tea and then I fill it the rest of the way up with I use warm water I don't think it matters it's um, instant so it you know obviously dissipates no matter what you really do with it so um, anyway that's what I do so it's a very strong very strong tea so if you're going to use tea bags or whatever you might want to use multiple tea bags to get it the nice strong tea, okay? And then I just take pieces of paper and I know my lighting down here isn't great. I do have an overhead light right above, but um, it makes weird, crazy um, designs, you know, uh, with the shadow and all of the camera because the camera's right there. So anyways, long story short i have another light right over us but it's just not quite as bright and then it's very bright in this room but for whatever reason that's what we have so i apologize if it's not the brightest in the world but i'm gonna put some of this tea in a little tea saucer now of course you don't have to use a tea saucer it's just kind of fun and makes neat designs so sometimes i'll take um and i've done this i think around the time i was doing my alice in wonderland and I just dunk the cup, you know, you can get these, you can get false um, stencils. Like I even have a stencil in my shop that has the round circle, kind of like a teacup or a coffee cup or, you know, that look. So I'll do stuff like this sometimes. I just think this real teacup is kind of fun. But if you don't have a teacup, you can obviously use anything circular. You could even use, you know, a bottle like this or um, some type of food jar or whatever. It doesn't matter. You're just making circles. And then I also have a pipette and I just um, get some of the tea and I kind of hold it up high and do just little, to get that splatted, see how it went. That's kind of what I like. And obviously this is not the way to dye papers if you're trying to do loads. Like you want a uh, hundred sheets of coffee dye paper. This clearly, <laughs> this ain't it, right? But it's really fun. Like if you're going to back a few tags in a specific journal or whatever, it's just kind of a fun way to have it. Then what I do is I have right over here on the floor, a piece of uh, plastic, like uh, um, those kids party, the table covers, or um, what do you call it? shower curtain from the dollar store, giant, just whatever, a garbage bag, whatever, a piece of plastic. And then I'll set it on there to dry. And I generally let mine air dry. So just, you know, leave them set there for a day or whatever. And if you don't stack them, um, they'll dry fine. You know what I mean? They'll dry quick is what I'm trying to say. So I have an envelope here. I'm just going to sop up some of this that... I spilled and um, I do that kind of thing, you know, just sop up whatever's sitting on there and then we'll do some more. And then what I do after I let them dry and I'll show you cause we'll take a little pause in a minute and I will get a couple things dry. I probably won't be able to get like this entirely dry just because of the plastic window. You don't want to use your heat gun on envelopes or things with those plastic windows because it doesn't work out well <laughs> at all. So um, it melts, it melts them, okay? So like just as simple as that. I'll set that down. We'll pick up some more of this with another piece of paper. I have a bunch of half sheets. These are great. I um, have tons of these always from 
my Etsy shop labels. And I know you can get the sticky labels and all that, but my printer is a pain, so I just used paper. So I just try to use up my half sheets. I'll dye a bunch like this and then um, like make, you know, pockets or back tags or whatever with those. Okay, and I'll just set that up over here. I'm gonna grab a paper towel, I'll be right back. So yeah, this is the easiest place for me to do this because on my desk upstairs, there's just no room at all. <laughs> it's got stuff on either side that I use to do videos, so it just ends up being like a, a mess. So we'll do a whole sheet again. And this one I might just do like, ah, didn't mean to do that. Drops from this, if you don't, you know, you can drop however works for you. And I'm sorry if the camera's shaking. It's like hanging all the way across the table. <laughs> so it's not the best setup in the world, I will say. Oops, I just bumped it. But I wanted to show you guys because I have had a lot of questions. So apologize for the, the videoing today. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside. So I just play, basically. I just like to play and see what things I get. And like I said, obviously, this is not going to be like 100 sheets of paper because <laughs> that would take you an eon. Another thing I like to do is use watercolors. So I just have water, obviously, in this jar. And I have my uh, watercolors here. And there's not going to be room, but I just want to get some of these wet. I didn't bring my spray bottle down. I'm going to get like some darker colors because I'm going to make this little bit of water dark. Like basically black. And this would be something you would do, like you wouldn't want to make this yourself like I'm doing because it's kind of a waste. But if you've been painting with watercolors, like doing something else with watercolors, and you end up with that kind of black lots of colors, water, that's, you know, it's kind of gross, but um, I'll show you just a second here. It is kind of fun to play with. So yeah, you obviously probably aren't gonna do it this way because like I said, that's kind of a waste, but um, when you have that water, you don't have to waste it. You can use it to do, oh, it's not quite dark enough yet. I'm gonna move my paper out of the way. Sorry, I'm just making it a little darker, more black paint. You'd think it'd be dark enough. I'm just gonna use some straight black, I think, on my brush here. Because it's another kind of fun effect and you can um like maybe if you wanted to have a few different jars water one down a little bit more than the others and then you get kind of that gray rather than black i like to have these around too when i get around to it i've been a little bit busy <laughs> so might put a little brown in there. You can always use Tim Holtz Distress Oxides, um, like watercolors. If you don't have watercolors, you just put some of the Distress Oxide on a piece of plastic. You can use a paintbrush with it, whatever you like. And, um, make some splatters so super simple and we're gonna get that one dry see what we end up with and I try to keep them as flat as possible uh, so that um, and I'll do the other side of the envelopes as well 
I do both sides, but I'm just doing the one side to show you guys. But obviously, if you're going to want a whole bunch, then you're probably going to want to do more like a bin session where you, um, what I do when I do a whole bunch, and I usually only do that in the summer because it gets dry fast. Um, I take, I have another sort of a box thing that is plastic and I fill it about halfway with tea, you know, a tea mixture or coffee mixture or whatever. And, um, I just dip one page at a time in, push it to the bottom. And a lot of times I'll even turn them over, like dip it in, move it around, flip it over, push it all the way to the bottom. And then uh, do another one until I have a whole stack in the bottom of the bin. And then I'll let it sit for, I don't know, 30 minutes or whatever. Dump off the excess uh, tea or coffee and then um, like set it outside to dry. And it usually dries real quick. And sometimes I'll even go out and like flip them over and try to peel them apart, flip them around, just because they do stick together. And I don't know what that's about, but um, they do. So you wanna kinda try as they dry to keep them moving around. And then that way, you know, you don't end up with stuff stuck together. What sticks together really bad, which is very bizarre to me, is um, glassine bags. <laughs> They're the weirdest things to dye because even if you're just using plain old um, coffee or plain tea or whatever, for some reason, there's gotta be something in the glassine bag, obviously but uh, it sticks to itself and you can't get the bags open. So there, if you're gonna do glassing bags, definitely make sure that you're um, like opening them, putting your hand inside to make sure that they don't seal themselves closed. And the same thing with envelopes. Um, the envelopes I have have a little strip on there to keep them from sticking to themselves. But if you're using just regular envelopes that you have to lick, just know that they can stick to themselves. So just something to think about. And then you can do other colors. I have clean water here. Um, with the watercolor, obviously, I mean, you can do anything you want. I like to do the pink with the black. And you can do the cup, sh you know, the bottom of the cup and all those kind of things too. So whatever you want whatever designs you want. A lot of people use those plastic uh, tablecloths to get a lace effect. I don't have any of those. So, um, you know, I can't show you that, but, and that gives you that really cool lace design that you, I do very basic <laughs> coffee and tea dyeing. I don't, the biggest thing I might do is the, the cup bottom kind of thing and that's about it. So I'm going to wipe off the bottom of my cup and actually I'll just kind of pour this on here and we'll add some other different paint. And these are old, um, you know, real teacups and stuff you might not want to use, but if you have like just one that you're not that worried about what goes on with it, then... more like you're having wine or something, right? I do love the circles, as you all know, if you've been watching me for a while. I'm a freak for circles. Actually put some tea in here now. I 
And then someone else mentioned that they would like to see the art dolls, um, like, you know, how I, how I did the one I did kind of thing. So I will be showing that eventually. I thought this was a good kind of midweek project, something different anyway. I mean, loads of people have done videos on coffee dyeing, tea dyeing, and whatever. That is nothing, nothing new. But everybody's got kind of a different way or method of doing it. And I don't know how to do the whole lace thing. I've never done that before. Another thing you can do, obviously, is just um, use watercolors. And, you know, maybe make circles. Oops, I still got some pink in here. But it's okay. Do I have... Um, Now, obviously, uh, watercolor paper is best if you're using watercolors. This type of paper is not going to give you the cool, like, you know, how you can touch it and the watercolor spreads it. It's not going to do that on this paper. So this is more like just, you know, make some kind of design, let it dry. And um, it's just fun to tear up and use and whatever. Actually, I think I want not that pink. I don't know, I'm just, you know, making designs. I'm trying to do a flower, but did a really poor job of it there. <laughs> I am not a watercolorist, I will tell you. I like to play with them, yes. Do I know what I'm doing? No. And I'm sure that people are cringing who do watercolor regularly. But the only way to learn stuff is to try it and play with it and do it, especially with art. It's just kind of all you can do, right? Is play around and see what you get. I'm better with the splatters, I think. <laughs> Don't ask me to paint. It's kind of crazy because I used to paint murals on walls, but watercolor is just a different beast in my opinion. I don't know, I've never really known how to watercolor. Somehow I can make uh, acrylics work for me, but. And I did not go to school to be an artist or anything, so I'm not trained in any way, shape, or form. So really, the way I learn is just to play with stuff, so. I do not claim to be a professional. All right, let's have this one back and do something else on here. Let's do some water dots and see if it will. They really don't bleed out at all with the, um, this kind of paper is not the thing to use for watercolor. But you can just get some nice backgrounds for your tags. The thing about it is, is you can leave some white space and, um, you know, that way you can write on it. So that's kind of the goal with the whole using watercolor thing. Okay, I'll take this away. I will get a few of these dry and then we'll come back and I'll show you, you know, what I do next. So okay, do I am back. For the most part, these are dry. Um, these envelopes are a little wet because like I said, I used my um, 
heat gun to dry them. And <clears throat> that's really hard to do with the, the plastic windows. So those aren't entirely dry, but they're dry enough to move forward. So the rest of it is pretty darn dry. Let's start with the one that we started with. There's a few wet spots still, but it's, you're gonna get the idea, which is what I want. So I went for a little walk in between. So they did air dry a little bit. Um, so what I do now is basically the same thing over again, but I might try to hit some of the spots that didn't get hit. And you'll notice that a lot of these uh, where I had a lot of tea on the bottom of the cup, they kind of just, bleh, you know, and that happens there, you know, that's just the, the tea soaking into the, um, the paper. Wow. <laughs> that was rough. <clears throat> so I'm going to go in and do some more and I'm going to overlap in some spots and then these things will come up even darker when it dries again. If you see what I'm saying, you'll still see like a lot of the underneath lines, but, um, you know, then it'll come up darker in other spots. So yeah, you're just, it's just playing around truly is all it is. It's, um, not, I don't do anything like really specific or fancy or anything like that. I would say the best thing that I like about doing this process is that you do get that kind of overlap of, um, you know, the old spots and then the new spots. So that's kind of cool. And I'm going to try to use a little less <clears throat> tea this time because I don't want to obviously put so much that I just end up blotting out the whole thing and then it doesn't really look like anything. You know what I mean? And if you want, you could stop where, sorry, I'm shaking the whole thing, um, where we started this time. If you know what I mean? Like you don't have to add anything to it. If you like it the way it is, then just have it that way and that's fine. A little bit more here. So yeah, I just, you know, add a little more here and there. That's it. That's all. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it down to dry again. And I'll show you them when they're all completely dry. So we'll probably have another little pause session there. <clears throat> tipped it and so a lot of those went running ah darn and then the same thing with my envelope I might just kind of pick up some of these so that I get uh, dots on top of other splotchy splotches maybe I'll put one kind of cup ring over here or something okay and that I might just let dry so you can do a little bit more. <laughs> I have like not quite enough to suck up with the thing there, the dropper. And sometimes I even push the dropper on here and squeeze it real fast and then you get lots of little drops. So then that one I'm gonna put aside. So I didn't do a whole lot. Um, still need to do the other side of the envelopes too, but. We'll get there. Let me find. I liked this one. This was the watercolor in the black and browns. So I think I'm just going to kind of pick up a little bit of this tea and maybe do a few rings on it. And then this one I think will be done. But it definitely gets to be real crinkly. You know, because it's multiple times of soaking up water and stuff. Or, yeah, water, tea, whatever. That thing is leaking. These are just super fun to use as backgrounds, I think, like for collaging or whatever. So like I said, these aren't something I generally make for pages in my journals. I mean, you totally can, but you just don't get very many in a session. It takes, it takes a, a bit to get very many so but they're great for just adding something and then you know after these are all dry it would be fun to maybe add some gold uh, splatters or something like that or even just black 
splatters. Just a little pink MRT. So I think I'm just gonna kind of soak these up. for my walk I was listening to that Letitia Stout trial still oh my gosh that lady I'm telling you <sighs> she stresses me out just listening to her like it causes me anxiety <laughs> because I cannot even imagine what on earth the matter with her do that to that family ay 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 She's, she did murder the 11 year old, her 11 year old stepson, if you haven't ever heard of the case. And lie, cheat, and still after that. It was just crazy. It just, it just, like I said, causes me anxiety. I just get anxious. Oh, I need to get a little more water. Hold on just a second. Try to go in and take those little parts out where I leave <laughs> if I remember. <laughs> I like this dark blue here. So I'm gonna try to get a little. I don't remember which one it was because I was just splatting and dunking and splatting. So, but I like that. And And then I think we're going to call this one done. This is a little different. Obviously, you're still going to get layers, right? It's like watercoloring. You're going to get layers still. But I just don't want to make it super dark. So take that one away. Yeah, I don't know why I like to listen to all that. I just kind of find it fascinating the way the mind works. I mean, I guess that's the psychology portion of my <laughs> of my brain that likes all that but um I don't know what I'm gonna add maybe some of our dirty water pretty good as a little stamp stand. <laughs> people think they'll get away with I'm like how on earth did you ever think you're gonna in this day and age with DNA just all the stuff they can do all the cameras everywhere everything the tracking on the cars I mean all of it it's like how on earth do you actually think you're gonna get away with that I don't know it's crazy why would you do it in the first place We need some stress relief, do some crafting for crying out loud. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen? Sorry. <clears throat> I mean, we all have our days with our kids where we want to pull our hair out, but yikes, what the heck? <clears throat> Maybe we'll add some dirty water to this one too. So you can mix it up, keep the same, do whatever you want. Heck, craft with the kids. Kids like that too. 
That's a good, you know, stress reliever and everybody relax. Take a chill. Sorry, I know I'm shaking the whole thing. The whole dang thing. one dry and we'll see what we get. And the other envelope, I'll just pick up all this stuff back here. Splatter. <clears throat> this tea is very strong. It's really almost coffee. <laughs> but I like it like that because sometimes if you just do tea bags, um, you need a lot of them to get it very dark or that it just turns out <clears throat> almost like a creamy color, which is great. Like sometimes you just want you know, that all over tone of, you know, kind of coffee or whatever, but you don't want them to be super dark. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. So that back's done. Or has a layer on it anyways. This one, which is, this is one we just soaked up splatters the last time. because there's the black it mixed in with the tea so it's real this is why you need a splatter box that's what I have this in is my splatter box that I showed you guys before because it just went everywhere I have a thing on the table but <clears throat> Let's see how that dries this I'm gonna wipe up because I have the one with the pink I don't want too dark. Okay. The pink and the black. What do I want to do? I think I'll do the black dots again. Probably going to ruin this tea plate. All right, I'm just getting some black here, watercolor. black in there so it's not the best pink ever but I think you guys get it we're just making layers more layers okay so I'm gonna pause and I'll get all that dry and then we'll come back and look at them again okay I'm back and yes I did it this one's still partially wet but you can see I melted the <laughs> 
the plastic. So what you can do if you do that, I was trying to rush it for the video kind of thing. Normally, I just let them dry. But um, you can take the plastic out and put a new piece of acetate in there and, you know, it's fine. I did get the back started on that one. This one's basically done. You know, I'll just let it finish drying all the way. And then our other ones, we have our pink. So you can see the overlap. And you could keep going. You, Like I said, you could add um, like white splatters to this one or black or gold or silver, whatever. Or you can just keep it the way it is. It just depends on what you want to use them for. So there's the, the pink and the black. And then we have our blue ones. We have this one with the black circles and then this one with just all blue splatters. That's kind of a fun summery type one. In here. And here's another, this one was kind of everything because it was a mop-up page that I was mopping up the bottom so there's some black and all that in there. And then we have a base one, but you can definitely see the overlap happening because you're putting on layers. So you could keep going um, with more or just have it like that. And there's the one with the brown and the black paint and then the tea over the top. I like that. But my favorite is this one that was just the tea and then I added the black circles and this did really cool um, the black circle and then there's a tea circle around it so that's kind of I don't know, just a fun little something. So anyway, um, that's how I do it. Not saying my way is the right way. There's loads of ways and you do it the way you like to do it. But I would definitely encourage you to just play with your papers um, to figure out how you like it. And like I said, I usually do just let them dry themselves. Um, it's best if you have a sunny day because then, you know, obviously you're going to get them dry quicker. But you can use the the heat tool to dry them or a hair dryer works if you don't have a heat tool. I don't do the oven thing because I get very squirrely and I'm afraid I'm going to burn down the house. So I don't do the oven deal, but you can put them on drying racks in the oven. And um, I mean, that does work. And there's people that have videos on how to do that. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful and I hope that you guys give it a try because it is very fun and does add something to your art pieces. So I will chat with you guys again tomorrow. I hope you have a lovely evening and see you soon. Love ya. Bye.